Hello guys, this is Omran. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna show you how I made this animation for the jellyfish in Typhlo 3ds Max. So let's get started. First, I'm gonna start modeling the basic shape of the jellyfish. I'm gonna use splines. Smooth them out. So it can be as detailed as you want. I'm not gonna make it so detailed, just to show you. So I'm gonna use lathe modifier. Weld, flip control, normals. And then I'm gonna lower the spline interpolation. Let's say two, two, and then increase the lathe segments level. Okay. So now we have that basic shape. I'm gonna convert to a visible poly. Um, so we can either add the shell. At the beginning and then have the the model complete or we can add it later after we uh, add the cloth so let's let's add it now so like the inner faces I'm just gonna make it also basic like this then I'm gonna model the the tentacles. So first, let's make one here. Connect, lower it a little, and then select the. So I'm holding control while clicking on the vertex. So this converts the selection from edges to vertices. So now I'm gonna have a extrude. For the part for the vertices, let's say this is good. Then weld uh, because we have uh, double vertices here. Weld them. So do not have this effect of too much spreading around and just scale them down. And then I don't want to have this pointy geometry here, so I'm just can chamfer it. Mm. Sorry. Okay. So you can make this as uh, long as you want and increase the segments here. So after we finish the basic model, I'm gonna add a uh, turbo smooth to have a smoother shape. So anyway, now we have the basic mesh. I'm just so uh, the way I did the animation at first, I had uh, a rig. I created a basic bone rig. So I'm gonna create it now. So you can make it as detailed as you want. Uh, you can increase the number of bones for each uh, line if you want, but I'm just going to have a few of them, not, not completely detailed. That's good. So now I'm going to animate uh, only the base. I'm going to show you how, because I'm, I will have a secondary animation on the secondary bones. So I'm not going to animate all the bones. I'm just going to animate this the way the jellyfish swims. So for example, then it goes back up again. And then again. So 
So jellyfish in general are slow, slow creatures. So you can have it uh, as slow as you want. Just gonna have. I think this is good for now. Just gonna have a little bit of squeeze at the end. So the way I'm controlling the timeline is I'm holding control and alt and uh, cl clicking the right mouse button. So the right mouse controls the right side and the left mouse controls the left side while holding control and alt. Okay, so now we have basic animation. This is good for now. Uh, the way I animate the secondary animation for the bones is I use a script called uh, Magic Spring. It's a free 3ds Max uh, script. I will show you where to... Uh, I will just put the link in the description. Spring Magic. So just drag and drop. So first I want the animation to loop. So you check loops and then spring controls how much secondary animation you want so I after some testing I found out that 3 till 4 is it's fine so you select the secondary bones and then you just hit bake So it has like uh, two move movements here. So it's fine for now. I'm, I'm okay with it. But in general, the, this is not the, the realistic animation of jellyfish. But uh, this is fine for now. So anyway, um, like I said, you can control how much uh, secondary animation you want by increasing or sorry, decreasing the spring. So if you have 0.2, they will like fling around. So anyway, this is good for now. I will now, so because I'm gonna skin the mesh to the bones, I'm just gonna fix the orientation of these bones. It's fine uh, because I'm not animating, you can rotate them and still have the animation. But if you have auto key uh, activated, then you are only animating this key. But if uh, it's not activated, then uh, you can move it around and it will keep the animation. Now I'm gonna duplicate it. I think I don't need that. Okay. So this one, I need some so you see it's uh, rotating all over, so I just centered the pivot. Okay, this is good for now. Now I'm gonna skin the jellyfish to the bones. So uh, I, I don't want to skin the and uh, the end bones, those small ones, you can delete them actually, you don't need them. So I just want to skin this part, not the top part, because I will add a, a head bone here. If you want to squeeze the head or expand it. So I'm just going to skin this whole area of the jellyfish to one bone. Okay, so I'm going to call this selection one, for example, and then go to the skin. 
add bones and select number one. So now each bone is, uh, has uh, auto weight to it. Uh, in 3ds Max we have uh, a very nice feature, which is a uh, weight solver. So just check this. I want 0.5 fall off from each bone or 0.7 max influence. I want four bones or mm, it's, yeah, let's say six bones control each vertice, vertex. And uh, the resolution the more resolution you have, the better solving you have. But this is fine. 512 uh, usually you get good results. I'm going to wait for it to bake. OK, it's done. Now the baking is done. The, you see the jellyfish now. It's animating. So I'm not going to worry about the tentacles because uh, we're going to make them cloth in uh, type flow. But uh, the basic animation of the uh, jellyfish is there, even though we have uh, a little bit of swinging here, but it's fine. So anyway, like I said, um, I want to skin the head of the jellyfish to one bone. And that bone can be a bone or it can be a point helper. I'm just going to use a point helper. Let's say this in skin, right click, add bones, and then select that. Now, um, selecting that bone, I need to tell it that I want to use these vertices only. So I selected the bone point and then activated the vertices. And then now I'm going to paint weight. So I don't want to blend the weights now. I just want to have them all uh, follow the point. So one click here, scale up, another click. So as you know, the red uh, color is 100% uh, effect and it uh, the gradient goes to zero. So blue is zero or 0 0.1 maybe. So anyway, now this bone controls the head of the jellyfish. Um, it needs some fixing. That's fine. Let's, uh, let's say this is here. Select that uh, bone point. And let's paint now with blend weights. So you can be as detailed as you want. I'm just gonna think this is good for now. Now I want a master controller. I'm just going to add another point helper. So I'm going to parent everything to this point helper, including the parent bones. So now everything is parented here. So um, let's say, let's have just a basic animation for this, just moving up. There's something happening here. Yeah, this one. Hmm, interesting. Oh, yeah. So we had the animation, the, the first animation that I used on this, it's uh, getting skewed up because I parent the bones to the point helper after I animated. So uh, this is like a basic animation uh, trip, uh, sorry, tips that uh, before you 
animate, you need to have the parents all connected. Then you animate. So anyway, now we have uh, some basic animation for the jellyfish. Now let's apply the dive flow. Okay, let's create dive flow. First, I'm gonna create a birth objects because I want the mesh of the jellyfish to be the base. And I'm gonna hide the base one, the original one, because I'm not gonna need it. Okay, uh, then we add cloth bind. So now we have the jellyfish now is a cloth mesh. It's gonna leave the, uh, yeah, I'm gonna enable only code collision solver. This gives more uh, realistic collision to the cloth. Now if we add the uh, force, for example, mm, let's make turbulence, for example, 0.5. If we scrub the timeline, you see the cloth is activated. But you see it's, uh, it's not following the mesh, uh, sorry, the bones. Now to make it uh, follow the bones, we need to bind the cloth to the bones. So first, uh, one thing, I only want the head or this part of the jellyfish to be bound to the, to the bones because we only have bones here and uh, the tentacles are cloth. So right now nothing is bind. I'll add a first object test. Then that object is the, let's say, it's the point helper, the master. And uh, this is, will be based on distance from this uh, point helper. And I'm gonna send this event to object bind. Now, the object bind are the bones. So I'll have the particles uh, bind to these bones, the animated ones. So I'm gonna add them from here. I have the same name still. So if we scrub, Just need to increase the distance to the bones. So right now, uh, you saw before, so this event, uh, this color of the current particles, so they are still in this event. I want them to move to this event to have the object bind and be bound to the bones. So I'm just going to increase the distance, the distance from point 2, which is the master controller. Let's call it master controller while we are here. So now the more distance, when I increase the distance, you see the particles are changing. So this means they are moving to the second event. So I think I only need those to be stuck to the bones and the rest are cloth. So you see right now. We have some basic shape. But yeah, some things happen. The bones are not, or the cloth is not uh, acting correctly. So anyway, uh, we don't need the force. Or if we have to keep it, we just gonna lower the value of the turbulence. We kind of have two turbulences and each one different value. Because one of them is, uh, you can have one for small turbulence and one for big turbulence. But just for the testing sake now, I'm just going to have one basic. 
Second thing is uh, the bones are now uh, the animated ones. So they stop at 1.30. I want them to have a loop, let's say. So I select them and go to Curve Editor. So you see their animations. I select them all and go to Out of Range Types. And then just loop. To have them keep uh, repeating the same animation. If we want to have this, uh, the master bone also uh, have the same keep moving, let's say. Uh, you can have out of range but uh, relative repeat. So this will keep it moving uh, forward in space. You can make it more straightforward. Or you can make it more realistic. Like a uh, jellyfish will only move until it flaps its uh, tentacles. Back to type flow. Uh, so now the tentacles are collapsing with each other. So we just add a physics shape and make it mesh. So now it will take into consideration the shape of uh, the mesh of the particles so they won't collide as much. You will have still some collisions. But this will keep them a little bit away from each other. Also add the physics collision. Also mesh. So you still have some collisions here and there. Also there's uh, another thing. So currently, you see the particles are moving to this event and then when the mesh of the uh, the jellyfish moves. You see another particles join. So that's uh, I don't want to have that. That's why uh, I need to make the object test not continuous, just only once on event entry. See, this will keep them just the first set. I don't want any new particles to be added. Um, we can avoid most of the collisions in the tie flow if we increase the solving uh, the solver parameters. For example, if we make it uh, process each half frame, not frame by frame, so it will process one and one point one and two, two point five, three, three point five, and so on. Or you can have it every fourth. So it will have like each frame will have four parts, and we can uh, increase the physics substeps. Okay, another thing is the whole uh, par particles are following the mesh, so I want some of them to hang behind. I don't want them to move like this, so we add a slow operator. So this will tell the particles to hang before moving. But uh, I think 5% is too much, make it 2.
Now we can add if we want uh, to the smooth, make it smoother. And uh, the same way I did for the tail. So the tail, basically, I'm going to model something very quickly. Let's say this increase segments. Not so much. the noise modifier yeah you can make it as detailed as you want just gonna make it basic some twist to it, a uh, twist modifier. Have the pivot in the center or the beginning. Rotate and add it again. We can have uh, multiple copies. So I think we need a thickness to it. I'll just add shell. You can have that or you can just leave it as a single, single layer or you can have some depth to it. Same thing. This one a little bit taller. So this is a uh, sorry if I'm not that detailed because uh, I'm just focusing to have a tie flow effect on the jellyfish. So you can model a realistic jellyfish and then have the same principles that I used. But for now, I'm just showing you the basic modeling of. The jellyfish in order to have the effect so i'm just gonna add the same thing now when i made this as uh, as particles the mesh i'm just gonna do the same for the tail so i'm just gonna create another uh, another tie flow i'll use only this the same so this one will be for the tail the birth objects the tail and hide hide the original mesh or view as box and uh, one thing that uh, I need to link them to the master controller so they move with it when they animate uh, second thing is the object test is still the same and have the object bind so we can have uh, again bones or I'm just gonna add this the head So 
So you see the distance from the head from this point, the particles are already in the second uh, event because of the color. You see the same color. If I make it green, say, see. So I'll just lower the distance. I don't want. So the the green ones are static. That's the thing you have to uh, consider. So this event means static. And this event is the cloth one. So I don't want this this whole part to be static. I just want it to stick to the jellyfish. So if we lower. Yeah, I think that's good. It's going to hide the particles. So as you can see, the tail is hanging behind before it animates because of the slow operator here. I'm just going to load a few frames in order to show you. Just going to load the whole thing. You can see here. So the animation is not realistic, sorry about that. It's just an example. So um, you see the tail is, uh, or the tentacles are following too much. You can just increase the, like before, increase the slow. It's gonna make them hang behind more. That's it. Now you can just duplicate this, or uh, if you want to have multiple of them, you can export uh, a limbic, a limbic mesh. So if you want to export an limbic mesh to use multiple uh, jellyfishes or jellyfish, I'd say. Just select the tie flow, either all of them or one of them, and just export or export selected and then select Alembic. Let's call it whatever you want. Save and then you select the range of how much animation you want, or it's just a simple mesh. All right, that's everything. Thank you for watching, guys, and see you next time.